In this video, we're going to consume the JSON objects from our API application in Rails, and we're going to be displaying that we are going to be displaying that in an Angular front-end application. So, first thing we want to do is to ensure that we have Node installed on our system. As for me, I have the latest version of Node installed as per the Node website. So once that is confirmed, and if you don't have that, just download it. Once that is confirmed, we also need to ensure that we have the latest version of Angular installed on our system as well. As at the time of this recording, Angular install installation files have been moved from here. Before, if you wanted to install Angular CLI, you would need to do to run Angular npm install angular-cli but as at the time of this recording the installation folder has been moved to angular-cli so if you are if you have this one installed before you would want to do sudo m you want to run sudo npm uninstall angular dash CLI. I already did this so I, I don't need to run it again. So once that is done you need to now run this. This is the new installation folder for Angular CLI. So you need to run this. Do you recognize the difference? The difference is the other one is Angular dash CLI and this one is Angular slash CLI. So that's where you're going to get the latest version of Angular, which is the beta 31. So I, once I, I already have that, now we need to move on and create our test, uh, our application, which is going to be consuming the Rails API JSON objects. So let's get started. First, I'll create a new application. I will name it Sample App, just in convention with our Sample API. and then open this you know serve this application for us to be able to view it in the browser and we can also open a new tab and view this in the browser I'm gonna close out of this so the app works you can check which version of Angular you're using by going to console, checking the body, and you can see the version of your Angular. So now we're going to create components for our post. Remember from the Ruby on Rails API, we created a post with description, title, ID, and we also sent an updated ad through the active model serializer. So we need to also inform Angular of all these attributes and the table created. So let's create a component for post. The way to do that is we do, we run ng generate component post, which creates a post folder with the post component dot ts that we're going to need so what we need to do first is create a post dot ts which is going to be our model inside this model we need to export class post and then create a constructor Inside this constructor, we give the I, the attributes. First of all is the ID, which is going to be a number, and also the title, which already we know is a, is a string. Next is the description. Once this is done, first let's create the service, which is going to be calling the Rails API. So let's create post.service.ts. The next thing we need is the HTTP model, response model. The next thing we need is observables from 
RxJS. We also need to import map from RxJS. Next thing we need to do is import our model now. And now we can inject the injectable to our service. We need to name the class post service. And first thing we need to do is give the URL of the post from Rails, which we can copy from here. Once this is done, we'll create a constructor. And then after that, let's get our posts. Our post is going to use an observable and we're going to pass in an array since a lot of posts is coming in. Now we need to rename our post.component file to postlist.component. And we have to change the name in all the corresponding locations. The reason why we want to do that is because we, we're still going to be creating post show, post new, and some other components. We relieve our post.component file from becoming clustered as a result by grouping all of this in different locations. We can also change the selector and also the template URL file. Now let's rename the HTML file for the template. Next, we import the necessary components for this class to work. Next, we create an object instance of our post class, which will later be used in our template. After which we now pass in our post service as a constructor. The next thing to do is to now create a get post function, which uses the post service to get all the posts from the Rails API and then store it into the post instance object that we created earlier. After that, we can subscribe to the post service with an observable timer. One other file we need to take note of is the app.model file. Remember the name of the component that we changed earlier? We didn't update it yet in the app.model file. So let's go there and make this change. First change we need to make is to create the exported class name in the post list that's component file. Once this is done, we can now import that class in the app model class. We also need not to forget to import that in the declarations array. Another important class to import is the post service class. We need to import it then declare it in our providers array to make it available globally in our application. Another thing to take note of is if we should try to access the post URL in our application, we won't be able to get that page. The reason being that we, have, we don't have a routing configured for that. So let's go back to our application and create a configuration for this right now. So let's create an app routing model file in the root of our folder. We name the file app routing model. I've already created a configuration for that, so I'm just going to copy and paste it from a previous project. Next thing to do is generate the component for the home page. Now we switch back to our test editor and finish up with the renaming of the routes and its components. In our next video, we're going to work on the post show components and the post new components using Angular 2 forms. Next, we go into the app model file and import the app routing class. Now, if we navigate to the post URL in the browser, we should see the content of the post page displayed. And nothing happens, we have an error. The reason for this error is that in single page applications like Angular 2, you need to set your router outlet for all your template files. So let's go and set that up. We navigate into the app.component.html file and give a directive from Angular called router outlet. Now let's save that and go back to the browser and refresh the page. And as you can see, the home page now works. Now let's switch back to our test editor and create something that could later in the future represent our navigation bar. If we now switch back to the browser, we can now view our post page. Switch back to our test editor and comment out 
Upworks. Finally, let us display the list of posts from our Rails API. In the post folder, let's edit the post HTML file. Now we need to look through the array of posts that we got from Rails earlier. Now let's see how this works by first displaying the title in the browser. And it works. So we switch back to the test editor now and display the rest of the attributes we got from Rails. And that's it. Let's switch back to the browser and check out what we have done. And as you can see, everything is displaying fine. We got the ID, the title, and the description, plus the date. As you can see, everything matches with what was displayed earlier in the terminal from Rails. One other thing we can try to do is style our date. There's already a pipe provided by Angular to do that. You can check out the Angular documentation for more info on that. Now, when you switch back to the browser, the date displays in a more friendly format. The thing we can try to do is to style up this page to display every post individually. This is where we have created the post list class. So let's use that in the post.component.css file. Switch back to the browser and see what we have done. And that's it. We're able to use our Angular application to communicate with our Rails 5 API application. For you to understand how observables work, I've decided to create a sample post from the Rails console. So let's switch to the terminal and see how this works. There. As you can see, the new post from the Rails console was displayed in the Angular 2 front-end application. So in the next video, we'll work on creating a new post using the Angular 2 forms and also show you all of this post in their own individual pages using their ID. I hope you enjoyed this video and I, and I hope to see you in the next video.